Welcome to Mind Flow Radio. We are creating conscious community by sharing mindful manifesting skills and transcendental music. We are all in this together. Right now, right now, right now. 
Love one another right now, right now, right now. Love one another right now, right now. Mind Flow Radio. Mind Flow Radio. She's Jalen. And he is Monty. And we made it to October. And here we are. Here we are. Happy Libra season, y'all. Mm-hmm. I love Libra season in a way because it's my birthday. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, it's been interesting being a Libra through this life. And oof, yeah, I'm I'm starting to understand it a lot more studying astrology so in depth and now I I'm like, "Oh, that's why I am the way I am." That's interesting cuz that's the way I feel the more I study the subconscious. Nice. <laughs> Mind, it's like, "Oh, that's why we are the way we are." Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, all stuck in these old subconscious patterns. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and if you look um, at astrology from the lens of ancient astrology, you see that everything is divided into night and day, light and dark. And it's all in relation to the seasons and the light and the dark and the subconscious in my mind or in my eye, in my inner eye yeah. <laughs> is the, that which we cannot see, but runs the program. It's the, the dark and it's in the dark at least. And once we bring it to the light, which what better time yeah. of year to bring it to the light, but when we're going into the dark time. So that yeah. that makes sense to me. Well, that's cool. You know, and <laughs> one way I, I believe to bring it into the light is to just notice, notice the self-talk, notice our belief systems. And then that kind of reveals the programs that are running in the subconscious mind. Mm-hmm. You know, and to... Step one in changing a program is noticing the old program. Right. Perhaps. That's one way of going about it, one way of seeing it. I'm pretty sure that's step one, no matter how you slice it. Oh, I don't know. I mean, just repeating the phrase, thank you. Yeah, it's very helpful. I mean, that's a way of reprogramming the subconscious without even paying attention to the old programming. Hmm. Just like... Yeah, it's jumping into a new program. Yeah. It's just, and we only have so much bandwidth in our subconscious. And if we can, well, as I've mentioned before, one of my favorite practices is just repeating the phrase, thank you, in my mind over and over again, Mm -hmm. starting first thing in the morning and uh, saying it as many times as I can during the day, during good times, during bad times, during neutral times, and with the idea being that that's growing my plot of gratitude in my subconscious mind. It's growing my belief of gratitude, Yeah, my program. Your understanding of gratitude and your connection to gratitude. Well, yeah, it, it grows that energy in my subconscious. And then just by growing that energy, it forces out some of the more unproductive um, beliefs. Yeah. Yeah. And pretty much every philosophy includes gratitude. Well, every spiritual philosophy includes gratitude. Well, maybe, oh, you yeah, can maybe think a of lot one of that them. doesn't. I, I'm no, I, I'm not sure. You know, I mean, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm that, not sure how the Tao. Uh, I think it talks about gratitude. Well, it definitely talks about connecting with the simplicity of nature mm-hmm. and connecting with the Great Mother and connect with the Great Mother, and then the Great Mother takes care of you. So there's a sense of like. Security and safety mm-hmm. and harmony and yeah. peace and love. 
Okay. Yeah, which is definitely related to gratitude. Yeah. I mean, for me, the more I get into gratitude, the more it's, the easier it is for me to be in peace and love. Totally. And less in the place of blame and shame. Mm-hmm. You know, which seems to be a pretty common program that runs in, in um, the human humanity's collective subconscious. Because <laughs> that's essentially that's what we're doing is we're reprogramming this um, collective subconscious kind of pattern that yeah. we're stuck in. It's, it's deeper than us. We can't just change well, I mean you can just change your mind but it's so deep it's part of our human experience and yeah pretty much everyone's learned it everyone oh yeah has had the experience and then the you know going into the idea of epigenetic trauma and well you right know, you're you're getting your grandparents trauma well grandparents 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 right. grandparents it goes grand- on and on and on yeah and on. There, there's <laughs> approximately 8000 generations yeah. Since humanity came about. And uh, just to imagine all the trauma over those yeah. 8,000 generations. Yeah. And I mean, it's a staggering amount of trauma that we all have. I um, just keep coming ancestrally. back. Ancestrally. I keep coming back to how grateful I am for this life. And it's it's just so powerful to to be in a place of feeling somewhat safe on a regular basis and feeling somewhat sure of myself. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Somewhat a feeling of I can navigate with less fight-flight on all the time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's been very interesting. And I would have to say that over the last... 20 plus years of my own deep dive into understanding the healing path and what is the healing path and how many healing paths are there and how do you get on it and how do you know which one's for you and and in that I feel that metacognition has become a huge piece of Noticing when something bubbles up and yeah, noticing... Just watching your thoughts. Yeah, and and being okay with uh, something bubbling up. And and it might knock me down emotionally for a little bit. Yeah. But it, I might also figure out, oh, yeah, okay, I must be feeling safe enough that this bubbled up so I can release it. Yeah. And, and go about it like that instead of just go into the blame and shame and, oh, this person did this to me. And because of that, here yeah. I am wallowing in this experience again as if it was real. And, and that is how it goes. Our memories spawn, they trigger these, these experiences where the past becomes present. And, and we're feeling it as if it was happening now and, and the emotional pain and the yeah. the body will actually tighten up and respond just as if it was happening right now. Yeah, and then that's part of our subconscious programming from our ancestors. I mean, that's important for us to realize that it's handed down mm-hmm. through generation to generation. And just, just imagine our ancestors have been through, our recent ancestors have been mm-hmm. through World War II. You know, go back a little farther, our recent ish ancestors have been through the you know the the great plague or whatever just you know um Mm -hmm. difficulty after difficulty which Mm -hmm. a lot of these translate into um feelings of peril Mm -hmm. you know and look out you know the shoes the sh- next, the shoe's ready to drop, yeah, you know, because absolutely. that's been the pattern of humanity mm-hmm. is just, you know, one, um, one, one incident after another, after another. And then that kind of programming is passed down to us. Mm-hmm. And the question is, mm-hmm. how can we shift out of that? Yeah. What do you, you do know? with this? I feel like now is the time for humanity, since we have the tools, to shift out of the old programming. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You know, and yeah. to and we're in a safe place. I mean, if you're in a safe place, yeah, so I right. Have to, yeah. to preface it with, if you're in a safe place, you yeah. have the ability to heal. Well, and if you're not in a safe place, we still have the ability to 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 hopefully find a safe place. Right, and we're only going to find it if we can find clarity. Mm-hmm. And if we can shift out of old patterns, mm-hmm. that's where the thank you practice comes in. From, from my perspective, is that it empowers us to to focus on the good, and which in turn helps us shift our lifestyle mm-hmm. into a place uh, that's more positive. And if we're surrounded by negative people and negative things and danger. The more we can build gratitude, the more it empowers us to remove ourselves from that situation. Yeah, ideally, totally. I I can remember back <laughs> to when I wasn't in a safe place, and how yoga really just gave me mm. the strength to eventually get to a safe place. But it took yeah. years. It took years of having to really become clear that. I, oh, I'm actually not in a safe place. Whoa, wait a minute, what? You know, like that was so, such a huge step for me to even be able to admit to myself that I wasn't safe. It's like, oh, how how long have I been living like this? Oh, uh, quite a while. Oh, uh, oh, (laughs) I got to get out of here. So, you know, it's that's kind of the path for people who have that kind of a deep pattern of unsafety. Right. Unsafety is normal, right? It is. <laughs> you know? Well, in some ways it is, though. I mean, just that's part of the human condition is there. there is like, there are things that can go wrong. Driving oh, yeah. a car can be, you know, dangerous. Oh, it is dangerous. It is. <laughs> But I mean, just to put it all we into forget. perspective, and, and that's know? that's a great that's a great analogy too, because we forget that cars are dangerous, and then there's people texting, or yeah, you know, I've been known to be looking for my audio book while I'm driving. You yeah. know, yeah, like yeah. I don't text while I'm driving, but I can't yeah. say I'm pure. You know, I'm I I do my part of making the road more dangerous. <laughs> Well, and to to just understand that there is an inherent amount of danger in the human condition. Right. Just kind of, and have, have, be at peace with that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, but also acknowledging it because we, we can normalize it to a point where we forget it's dangerous. Right. But we can also go the other way and just be in such fear that we don't live so right. there's there's two sides of that. Uh, what would you say? Continuum. Um, one thing that yeah. I, I want to share uh, is that song. That song is very meaningful to me, particularly. I wrote it. <laughs> and mm-hmm. uh, it's it's about the circle of life, Satanama. And it's mm-hmm. one of the most potent of the kundalini yoga meditations that I learned and have experienced for different time periods. And I have found in sharing it with others that it's, it's also helped them too. And this song is about the circle of life. One of the things that I wanted to shed mm-hmm. light on, I guess, is... It says, satisfaction is guaranteed mm-hmm. when old beliefs are all freed. Oh, wow. So there's nothing guaranteed, but you might be able to be satisfied with the uncertain and the unknown and the unknowable mm-hmm. if you create new patterns of belief, if you release the old patterns. So that's like a big piece of that song. Yeah. It's like the foundation. Yeah. Yeah, love one another right now, right now. Mm-hmm. Which is great. I mean, then that starts with loving ourselves. Right. Which, and that starts with releasing those old 
patterns of negative self-talk and Mm -hmm. just negative beliefs about ourselves. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And uh, I've been doing this meditation every morning for 45 minutes to an hour, and it's been really quite amazing. I do a lot of thank yous. Um, I also try to get into that space of the void, the unknown, the possibilities, the realm of possibilities, and face an old belief. And that's been interesting because sometimes it's the same belief and sometimes it's a new one that I was, wasn't was expecting to pop up and remind me, oh, I have that belief too. And so it's been interesting just yeah. honoring what bubbles up with the idea of what belief am I ready to let go of or yeah, transform. Or, or, or reduce. I mean, yep. that's... I mean, one way of looking at it in our subconscious, we could say we have a belief garden. And what beliefs do we want to grow? What Mm -hmm. beliefs do we want to weed out? I mean, but there's like the belief of everything is dangerous. Mm. Essentially, probably in in a small, to have a small plot of that is pretty healthy. You know, Absolutely. to have a huge plot of it is unhealthy. Right. Because <laughs> then we're stressed out and we're paralyzed, Yeah, essentially. Yeah. So we just want to work on kind of weeding it down mm-hmm. and grow it. That's why I say grow the, gre- the, the gratitude belief because it kind of weeds down mm-hmm. the, it brings in the danger belief. And and, yeah. Is gratitude a belief? I guess it could be. It seems like an emotion. But yeah, I guess this is where... Well, beliefs can lead to emotions. Right. That's exactly (laughs) what I was going to say is... um, Seeing the good maybe leads to gratitude, which... Mm -hmm. Yeah, or or faith. Faith that... Having faith. It'll work out, that everything is meant... When my son was little, my oldest son, Mm -hmm. I was even telling this on the latest phone call, you know, Mm -hmm. and, and I just hear his little... I I think he was either two or three yeah. when he started saying this to me. He said, everything happens for a reason, Mama. Yeah, And it's I true. was just like, what? This little being is yeah. reminding me that everything happens for a reason and to yep. be okay with things. Yeah, and that's one of the laws of hermetics Yeah, that I've been studying recently. Yeah, that's everything cool. happens for a reason. Nothing, nothing. If we think something is just chance, it means we're just not looking into it deep enough or we just don't understand, at least according to hermetics. So your your son reminding you of that at a very early age is really um, cool, you know? Yeah, totally. You know, He was uh, quite the little sage. And there's some faith in that. If, I mean, if we can believe that, then it's like, oh, the universe is essentially perfect. Mm-hmm. You know, if we can believe that, at least I believe it, at least for myself, mm-hmm. you know, another, mm-hmm. another aspect of hermetics is cause and effect is perfect. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I see that as there's our plan, which is good to have a plan it's yeah. good to think about, but yeah. it's also important to know that there's the plan and we can't, yeah. uh, we can't plan for the plan. We might. Our yeah. plan might coincide or or sync and sync sync up with yeah. the plan, but there's times where it just doesn't work out and yeah. cause and effect. It could be something from a previous life. It could be that there that we're a part of someone else's lesson. It could be well, there's so many ways. It could be cultural karma too. Yep, it could uh, be cultural karma. That's I mean, something Edgar Casey talks about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, our whole society has some karma. Oh yeah, good and bad. Just being born in a certain area can affect karma. But you we're know? here for a reason. Yep, yep, and we're uh, ultimately here to. Be liberated, and that yeah, was move towards liberation. Yeah, I've I've been studying uh, astrology for a while now, and going more in depth um, with Hellenistic astrology, which has been just so cool. It's it's ancient astrology, and one of the things that uh, was just revealed to me in a recent lesson was 
that the ultimate goal of astrology is to help you to understand your path to liberation. Mm-hmm. And that just blows my mind. Like, oh, how very cool. That's cool. We're so, all here to be liberated. Oh, yeah. Or to have the attempt or have, uh, not the attempt, but it's a possibility that if we focus in and don't get distracted too much and can focus enough that we will be liberated. Well, at least if we're on the path towards liberation, right? we're there. Right, think, because the know, path is the destination. Yeah, the path is the destination. And according to Buddha, each of us will be liberated eventually. It might mm-hmm. take somebody a hundred lifetimes. It might be this lifetime. Yeah, I mean, this might you be know. the hundredth lifetime or the millionth lifetime. Or, or I don't know. I mean, you could have, to, I don't know. Who I don't knows? know these things. Yeah, I, I right. can't even pretend to know. Right. But I do feel a deep peace with the idea that we're all here to work towards liberation and and some of us know that and others of us are figuring it out at some point (laughs) maybe it's next life when we realize it but and as long as we're on that path i think we feel better Mm -hmm. we feel okay we're living with purpose right at that point we see the synchronicities yeah different signs and people coming into our lives and it just feels so interestingly perfect how this conversation leads to that and that and yeah. that and it's just like wow well and i like the idea that astrology can help us to find our particular path yeah towards yeah. Li- liberation like our our own individual Dharma, Mm -hmm. like we each have our strengths Mm -hmm. and we each have our weaknesses (laughs) Mm -hmm. and just to uh, realize that and work um, accordingly Mm -hmm. with that helps us to find our purpose and how, what am I really here to do? Mm -hmm. Right. And it is so nice because it really takes the, the guessing out. I mean, there's, there's. Even when you look at an astrology chart, there's no clear, like, it's not written out. There's still all of this uh, channeling that needs to be done to even get the, what the symbols and their alignments even mean. So there's still not like a clear guidebook or a, there's no yeah. clear directions. There's There's always free will and there's always... All of the distractions that are calling to us, especially yeah. the ones that are have been our pitfalls in lifetimes before, you know, and they feel familiar and, oh, that, that's got to be good, right? Oh, maybe not. You know, there's, there's, we're humans, for goodness sakes. We, we're here to learn and grow yeah. and heal and... That's well, really the bottom line. We're yeah. all learning, growing, and healing at different paces and different ways. And yeah, well, we just got to be nice to each other. It's true. And be nice to ourselves. I mean, one way of looking at the human condition is we, each of us has the spark of God within us, but each of us also is confused mm-hmm. to some extent. Mm-hmm. And Absolutely. Yeah, if we spend all our time beating up ourselves, getting back to that. Mm-hmm. Which I used to do. Yeah, I mean, all of I, in some ways, I think we've been trained culturally to, to beat up ourselves. Mm-hmm. You know, it's sort of like you need to look this way. You need to have this certain amount of stuff. You need to fill, fulfill all these criteria before you can feel good about yourself, mm-hmm. according to um, our culture. But... It's good to get beyond that and to realize, you know, that there is a level of perfection Mm -hmm. in us. And there is, if we can just figure out our dharma and move in that direction, Mm -hmm. that we just begin to naturally feel better. Mm -hmm. We begin to naturally be less depressed and have less anxiety. 
And just have that perspective of, well, you know, a hundred years goes by like a flash of lightning. I'm going to try my best. I'm going to live. Yeah, I'm not going to get too caught up in it. Mm-hmm. You know, but give it a good shot. Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. So that kind of leads into our next song. Do you want to introduce the media age? <clears throat> oh, my. Well, it's Hare Krishna slash media age. I wrote the lyrics for the media age um, many moons ago, <laughs> you know, early 90s. Nice. <laughs> yeah. When I was... Uh, playing the bass and some bands in Milwaukee. And uh, yeah, and the Hare Krishna is is a beautiful chant that is very lighthearted, I believe. And I think the two two messages um, have an interesting juxtaposition and the, the drum beat is an unusual, highly unusual beat in five, which... I've really been grooving to for the last 10 years or so. Nice. And then Jay adds her special touch, <laughs> touches to this song. And we're, it's going to be uh, fairly, uh, you know, some improv, and we're just going to see how it goes. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Hang tight. <laughs> say media age turn the page free your mind unlock the cage 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 Papers, magazines, fill your head, it's on the scene. Radios, billboards, what's the fuss? Let it invade your consciousness. Let it invade your consciousness. Let it invade your consciousness. Let it invade. Your consciousness. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Ha the Rama, Ha the Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. 
Well, that was fun. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my I hope y'all got a little jig in there mm-hmm. so what what thoughts do you want to leave with our listeners this month well <clears throat> basically I just think it's important for myself to to really watch my subconscious belief system and understand when some of these beliefs actually get in the way of my progress. Mm-hmm. Because beliefs um, translate into behaviors, essentially, and attitudes. Mm-hmm. And... Um, personality aspects and uh, just understanding that a lot of these beliefs, like I said, have been handed down from generation to generation. So some of these beliefs may go back thousands of years and they just keep getting handed down. And as I've mentioned before, I mean, we really don't have to fight over the water hole anymore. Perhaps our ancestors had to fight over the water hole to survive. They needed to to um, <clears throat> obtain the water hole and defend it at all costs. <laughs> and all of our ancestors, amazingly, were the survivors. Yeah. So, congrats to all our all of our ancestors. <laughs> you know, and it, they they displayed great courage and will, and for a, you know a fierce um, love of life, essentially. Hmm. They, they, yeah, they, and they needed that ferocity, ferocity, to to survive. And <clears throat> now we can apply that to different. We don't need to fight over the water hole anymore. So we can take our will and apply it differently, perhaps moving towards compassion rather than competitiveness, for Mm -hmm. example. Yeah. I mean, that whole competitive vibe is something that's promoted by our culture and our ancestral um, habits. (laughs) Hand-me-downs. Yeah. But now let's work on just being more compassionate to each other. And as I had mentioned before, that all starts with being compassionate towards ourselves Mm -hmm. and noticing, using our meta awareness and noticing when old beliefs are holding us back, when old beliefs perhaps are putting us in a negative frame of mind, when old beliefs are perhaps creating agitation in our mind, when we're um, coming up against something that could really help us, mm-hmm. you know. So I, I'm I'm fairly convinced that the way that humanity will evolve is to is by us individually reprogramming our subconscious. Yeah, it is an individual it effort is. that's necessary, required right now for collective healing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I want to share with you that the one way I've been looking at Libra, Libra season, it's it's like we've walked over to the closet door and we've opened it. And the door is open and we can see a little light shining in from the room where we're at the threshold of, but there's no light in the closet. And... As we step into the closet and move into this time of year that is darker than it is light, it's a great opportunity to increase our courage, work on our confidence, to clean up the corners of our mind, and really plan and prepare for the light coming again in airy season in the spring. So I know that it's, it's a 
time of mm, apprehension is is how I've always seen it. You know, I'm I'm I am a Libra, <laughs> and ever since I was a kid, when fall comes, except when I lived in the south, I didn't mind in the south, but whenever I lived in the north, which was maybe half my childhood and most of my adulthood. As soon as the leaves start to change color, there's this dropping in my heart. Like, I'm just all of a sudden sad. And it's this apprehension of, oh, winter's coming. And I I was talking with somebody about this who also shares this feeling at this time of year of the heart dropping and feeling less than happy and less than whole. And I said, how about we try to enjoy our Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius season this fall? Let's let's try to enjoy it because winter's not here and there's not really a good reason to be bummed about winter <laughs> when it's not here. And to just understand, oh, that's kind of the nature of Libra season is all of a sudden, we're moving towards winter, but it's not here, so let's enjoy now. That's my my little message to yeah, share so, for this so being month. present. Yeah. Not being too wrapped up in the future. Right, right. <clears throat> it's, like, it's, it's almost like we're at that threshold of the dark closet, and we're regretting that moment where we have to go in it and clean, but we're not in it in the moment cleaning it so it's okay (laughs) we're just noticing what we have to do in the future but we're here in this present moment and let's enjoy it let's let's harness this moment for the beauty it holds and and know that winter holds some beauty too that's hard for me as a southern gal but it's true winter holds beauty too Mm -hmm. well great (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah it's good to it's good to focus primarily on on the present for sure because when we're facing like challenging times it's easy to get swept away by the the concept of that mm-hmm. you know but if we're swept away by the concept of the future then we're less effective in the present right which and, sets us up for not yeah. a happy future. And anyway. something a, a, a <laughs> Christian friend said to me recently, which really struck me, that she said, God is in the present. Mm-hmm. So if my mind is in the future, I, essentially I'm sort of disconnected from the Tao, from the higher power, mm-hmm. or if I'm in the past. Mm-hmm. I mean, but it's natural to... I mean, it's great to have goals for the future and learn from the past, but if we can primarily spend our time in the present, mm-hmm. we're just far more effective. And let's do it. Let's make this world a better place. Yeah. Let's let's Absolutely. improve our culture. Let's improve ourselves. Absolutely. And it's two steps forward, one step back. Just yeah. When you take that step back, you know, let's be nice to ourselves. Mm-hmm. It's self-compassion. Again, yeah, and just keep moving forward, and and that's a natural part of it. Is that step back? That mm-hmm. and it's called the ratchet effect. And if you yeah. have ever tied some kayaks to the top of your car, you know that when you're you're tightening down that ratchet, you pull it back so that you have room that you have leverage to then pull it forward, and then the rope tightens. So. We've got to take that step back almost to adjust to the new tightness or yeah. the new step we're on. You yeah. know, another way to think of the ratchet effect is when you're walking upstairs, your foot steps above the step and then lands down on the next step. So yeah. there's this, yes, there's this peak of the arch that's up higher, but then to actually be balanced and be able to move your body up the stairs, you have to step down onto the next step. Yeah. I mean, and, uh, another another way of seeing it too is the ego wants to improve in this like straight line. 
Mm-hmm. But nothing in, in, in nature, actually in the Tao Te Ching, it says circles inside of circles is the key to understanding. Everything is curved. Mm-hmm. And that's the ratchet effect. Two steps forward, one step back. Three steps forward, two steps back. Mm-hmm. Two steps forward. I mean, just on and on and on. But at the end of the day, you've taken 20 steps forward, mm-hmm. you know. And or that, at the end of a few months. So yeah. When I look back, one of the things that is very intriguing about this time period is uh, we're closing up a, an almost 20-year chapter of Pluto and Capricorn over this this coming winter. And when you look back to 2008, how much have you grown? How much have you changed? What has happened in your world that, I mean, who here is the same that they were in 2008? I'm pretty sure nobody, maybe somebody, but I think even the person that feels that they haven't changed at all since 2008, if we really sat down and looked at it, we would probably find some changes. Even simply in getting older and wiser. You know, even if your life didn't change at all, you're still older and wiser in Uh, some way or another. Yeah, so there's, I mean, there's a possibility of not growing and changing, but isn't that the only constant is change? Oh, for sure. For sure. And if we can accept that and be grateful for that and just find that presence and the clarity mm-hmm. that we can um, find in our minds will we'll help with everything. Mm-hmm. It'll help, with, help us navigate through hard times, help us navigate through good times as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And... And just a a note out there to our local peeps, our next satsang is on October 9th, so it's next Sunday, if you're hearing this when it airs on WDRT. And if you ever want to join a inner martial art class, there's Tai Chi at the Commons at noon on Saturdays. So come join the fun and get into your body and move Mm. in gentle ways that help your body feel better and improve your balance. And and it's like moving mindfulness. So if you ever want to uh, experience that or or actually to join the practice and 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 come regularly, that's that's completely Mm. welcome. And the satsang is at the Commons as well at 11 a.m. October 9th. And we're building spiritual community to uh, encourage and, and uh, strengthen our individual faiths, whatever they are. We have no dogma. And uh, we appreciate all benevolent faiths. And... For our uh, our virtual peeps, <laughs> or uh, how do you say, uh, mm, I don't know, distant peeps that can't come to our on per- in person things, we have we are on Insight Timer on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at eight thirty a.m. Central Time. Monty teaches a, a psychology and metaphysics breathwork class on Monday mornings, and I do an astro and meditation class on uh, uh, at 8.30 on Wednesday and Friday. And we have, if depending on where you found this podcast, we are also on YouTube and Facebook. Look up the Heart Mind Center and see what else is out there. We have memberships. The tribe membership is going to be an, a very interactive, monthly interactive group where we go over a subject that has something to do with the moon of that month or the season of that month and um, some mindful tips on how to embrace the changing seasons as they happen. 
So check that out on our website. And I think that's all the announcements I have. All right. Thank you, Jay. We we are all in this together. Mm-hmm. And um, peace and love to everyone. Yeah. And I honor the, the spark of God in each of us. Mm-hmm. So I think we're going to close it out here with a meditation soundscape, actually. So enjoy. Breathe deeply. I suggest breathing into your low back and exhaling calmly and relaxed. And really notice your breath. How does it feel? How does it make your body feel? And what what's going on in your body? Do you need to bring in spaciousness? Do you need to relax? Do you need to, does, is your body telling you that after you're done breathing, you need to get up and go for a run, a walk, a bike ride, a skip and a hop outside? Do you need to do some art or some yoga? Just notice what is revealed to you as you take some time to breathe. So I hope you enjoy it. And we will be back with our November edition of Mindflow Radio next month. Be well, y'all. Sat Nam Namaste. Aho. Amen. Many blessings and much love.
To become more involved in the HeartMind Center, join our community and explore our membership options. Also, check out our podcast, Mindflow Radio. Mindflow Radio. (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.